Welcome to the first video demonstration in a series about interoperability between Geomodeler software and FeeFlow software. The first approach is a legacy approach. It's been available for about three years and the method performs the task of filling geology domains into element centroid locations of a layered FeeFlow mesh which is already built for the job. The files you will need for this workflow are a tutorial a.fem file and a project tutorial a folder which is a complete geomodeler project or 3D geology model. These can be obtained from Intrepid Geophysics on request. If you want to learn yourself how to create a pre-prepared empty uh, layered FEM file ready for this task, then please see the second short video in this same series via our website or YouTube channel. For today's demonstration, the steps have been recorded in a written style, 19 steps. You can return to this screen at any time or use the captions throughout this video. In the next part of this demonstration, we launch the FeeFlow software. To transfer geological information from GeoModeler to FeeFlow, we first need to create a text file that contains the center points of the elements in FeeFlow. I load an existing FeeFlow model, for example, one from my recent file list here. And then for more clarity later on, the first thing I do is I create a new user data distribution as an elemental distribution that I call geology. I use this distribution with a right click on its name in the data panel. And from the context menu, I choose export data for all the elements as center. This allows me to export a data file. I choose, for example, export centroids and save this as a dot file, which is basically a text file with a number of columns. This already exists in my case. I replace it and say yes. I wait for the export to be done. Then I get the question whether I would like to add this map to the maps panel in Fairflow. In a typical case, you could already say yes now and later on when you update the information via GeoModeler it is automatically also updated in Fairflow. In this case for more clarity for the example I choose no and we will then do the next step in GeoModeler and load the modified file, the modified map file later on into Fairflow. Just minimize Fairflow for now and the next thing to do is bring up Geomodeler and open the project A. We have a project in which the 3D render has already been produced. If it hasn't been produced or, or if you'd like to do it at another resolution, you can proceed by the normal steps which is to compute the model with select all, select all, select all, OK and the next step is to render the model which is called Visualize 3D Formations and Faults. There's two choices to mesh. One is um, by triangulations and the seagull meshing is by tetrahedrons. Today we're just using the triangulations and they're already available so I didn't have to do anything in this case except the job to do is export 3D model fill fee flow centroids. What we need to do is browse to the, fo the file that we uh, created and it's called um, uh, .dat The job to do here is it's going to write out two more text files. 
export centroids underscore field dot text and export centroids underscore legend dot text. Just say OK. You can minimize GeoModeler now and return to Fayflow. Once we've filled the map, the ASCII file, with data from GeoModeler containing the information about the geological unit for each of the element center points, we can go back into Fayflow to the Maps panel and with a right click into the Maps panel, we can add the corresponding map to the model. I add export centroids filled dot that. If we had already added the original map before and filled this from GeoModeler, Fayflow would have updated the data automatically. For more clarity, I use here a separate map. The map is parsed, the information is added, and we can see it in the Maps panel. With a right click on the map, I can open the context menu and use the entry define coordinate fields to come up with a definition of which of the columns in the text file actually contain the element center point coordinates. For this, Fayflow parses the map first, which takes a couple of seconds here because it's a relatively large map. And in the dialog, I can choose the X coordinate of the center point, the Y coordinate of the center point, and the elevation of the center point to be used as map coordinates. Now without visualizing in the view, I can use the map immediately to fill our user data distribution geology that we have created before. In the context menu, I choose link to parameters. Once again, the map is parsed to get the current information. Here we go. In this dialog, we can now link the value in the column geo of the text file to our user data parameter that we have created before called geology. With a double click, I link the two and in the properties of the link, we can define how to transfer the data. In this case here, we have element numbers already in the file because we've exported it before. So we can define that we have a field that contains the element number, which is called element. Click on OK and get this link created. With a double click onto the link, we make our geology user data parameter the active parameter. We can select all the mesh elements as target geometries for the import of the data. And with a click on the green check mark button, we import the data from the map onto the geology parameter of our mesh. Here we go. I clear the selection again and we see that the geology has been correctly mapped onto the Fayflow mesh. Now, based on this geology, we can actually also define, of course, all the parameters of the model. I will just very quickly show how to do this. As one example, I can use the function select by expression and I can define an expression. Let's do this from scratch where I say, okay, I use my user data distribution that I've created for the geology, user data distribution geology, and everywhere where the value of this is six, this is the fault zone here, I select the elements with apply. I can close this. And now I can go, for example, to any of the parameters and define the parameters for these elements. Or as an alternative, I can store this selection and give it a name. Then it will be stored with the model and I can use it anytime later for um, purposes as parameter assignment, but also, for example, 
for budgeting, how much water do we have in this zone or how much water flows through this zone, etc. So it will be available as a general selection of elements and can be used anytime later directly here from the selections panel.